So good morning, everybody. <laughs> Gonna quickly set this up. All right. So here we go. So <laughs> I have a background in technology and magic. And magicians are interesting because their illusions accomplish what technology cannot. But what happens when the technology of the day seems almost magical? What happens when you can do this? Now, 100 years ago, that would have been the magic of levitation. Is it possible to create illusions in a world where technology makes anything possible? Jump. Now, if you know how the trick is done, where is the illusion? But still, our imagination is more powerful than our reasoning. And it's easy to attribute personality to machines. Now, they are quadcopters, but they are more than mechanical flying machines. They analyze the environment around them and react to everything I do. Advanced algorithms allow these autonomous machines to fly in close formation, aware of each other, aware of me. Mathematics that can be mistaken for intelligence, and intelligence for personality. Anthropomorphism, that's the illusion. No sleeping. An illusion created by technology and embroidered by our imagination to become an intelligent flying robot, a machine that appears to be alive. I think they say hello. I think that's it. Guys, want to land? There you go. All right. Thank you. OK, everybody. Time to go home. How about you all come over here? Come on. Everybody, quickly, come on. <laughs> I have something else I want to show. You can all fit in there. A little bit to the left. There you go. How about you? Come on up. There you have it. All right. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So the presentation with these flying robots is a combination of technology and illusion. It was created to explore our interaction with automata when the Internet of Things becomes commonplace. Intelligent machines that are always at our command, aware of every gesture. It would look like magic. Now, the authoring environment we use uses immersive AR to pre-visualize the flight space. So we use HoloLenses to see where the drones will be flying, and then we load the flight plan directly from Unity 3D into the robots. We deploy the behaviors, and the robots are then using their downward-facing cameras to track this pattern here on the stage, probably the, the, big tra the biggest tracking marker you're going to see at this conference. The carpet enables the drones to self-localize. They all have their own internal flight planner and are completely independent. That creates a very robust system, which is very easy to set up and has no single point of failure. A lot of what I do at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and for Accenture is about bringing these technological stories to life. We think of it as prototyping the future. For the development teams and organizations, it helps them consolidate their mission narratives. For the broader audience, 
It introduces them to concepts that are currently being researched. Now, an important part of this visualization is story. People don't remember data, but they do remember stories, and they tell them to their friends. That's how ideas about the future are shared, and that's how they are spreading. So, I would like, with that in mind, tell you another story. I began by telling a story about technology using magic. This time, I have a story about magic using technology. It uses augmented reality, so nothing is pre-recorded, and everything is live. And it's this uh, system over here. I imagine systems like this to be used in classrooms very soon to make classroom lessons more memorable. So it's a kind of non-immersive AR, which enables teachers to make classroom lessons more memorable. So imagine you are back in school, in class. We have a little lesson, and uh, the lessons happen up here on the screens. The real world is here. You can choose which to watch. The magic, the reality, or a little of each. So let's get started. Class, augmented reality is the melding of the real world with computer-generated imagery. It seems the perfect medium to investigate magic and ask why in a technological age we continue to have this magical sense of wonder. Now, magic is deception, but it is a deception we enjoy. Now, to enjoy being deceived, an audience must first suspend its disbelief. It was the poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge who first suggested this receptive state of mind. I try to convey a semblance of truth in my writing to produce for these shadows of the imagination a willing suspension of disbelief that, for a moment, constitutes poetic faith. This faith in the fictional is essential for any kind of theatrical experience. Without it, a script is just words. Virtual reality, just the latest technology. And sleight of hand is just an artful demonstration of dexterity. We are all very good at suspending our disbelief. We do it every day while reading novels, watching television, or going to the movies. We willingly enter fictional worlds where we cheer our heroes and cry for friends we never had. Without this ability, there is no magic. It was Jean-Robert Houdin, France's greatest illusionist, who first recognized the role of the magician as a storyteller. A conjurer is not a juggler. He is an actor playing the part of a magician. Which means magic is theater, and every trick is a story. The tricks of, of magic follow the archetypes of narrative fiction. They are tales of creation and love, death and resurrection, and obstacle that must be overcome. Now, many of them are intensely dramatic. Magicians play with fire and steel, defy the furry of the boss, or dare to catch a bullet or attempt a deadly escape. But audiences don't come to see the magician die. They come to see him live because the best stories always have a happy ending. The tricks of magic have one special element. They are stories with a twist. Now, Edward de Bono argued that our brains are pattern-matching machines. He said that magicians deliberately exploit the way their audiences think. Stage magic relies almost wholly on the momentum error. The audience is led to make assumptions or elaborations that are perfectly reasonable, but do not, in fact, match what is being done in front of them. In that respect, magic tricks are like jokes. Jokes lead us down a path to an expected destination. But when the scenario we have imagined suddenly flips into something entirely unexpected, we laugh. The same thing happens when people watch magic tricks. The finale defies logic, gives new insights into the problem, and audiences express their amazement with laughter. It's fun to be fooled. 
Now, one of the key qualities of all stories is that they are meant to be shared. We feel compelled to tell them. So when I do a trick at a party, that person will immediately pull their friend over and ask me to do it again. They want to share the experience. And that makes my job more difficult, because if I want to surprise them, I need to tell a story that starts the same, but ends differently. A trick with a twist on a twist. It keeps me busy. Now, experts believe that stories go beyond their capacity for keeping us entertained. We think in narrative structures. We connect events and emotions and instinctively transform them into a sequence that can be easily understood. It's a uniquely human achievement. We all want to share our stories, whether it is the trick we saw at the party, the bad day at the office, or the beautiful sunset we saw on vacation. Today, thanks to technology, we can share those stories like never before, by email, Facebook, blogs, tweets, the tools of social networking. These are the digital campfires around which the audience gathers to hear our stories. We turn facts into similes and metaphors and even fantasy. We polish the rough edges of our lives so that they feel whole. Our stories make us the people we are and sometimes the people we want to be. They give us our identity and a sense of community. And if the story is a good one, it might even make us smile. Thank you. So, in my creative practice, I combine technical expertise with the power of story to prototype the future. I think extended reality is an exciting technology that connects people, ideas, and businesses in unprecedented ways. And it works on every scale, whether you are diving deep into your fiscal data, constructing a skyscraper, or building a city. Now, it's been said that we are awash with data, and that the trick is to turn this data into information we can understand. Extended reality does that. It helps us understand and visualize data in new and unprecedented ways. There's really no limit to what can be done with it. So if you'd like to learn more, I'll be around. I'll be happy to talk with you. Meanwhile, I want to say thank you to Ori and AWE for having me, and a big thank you to you for watching. Thank you very much. <laughs>